Our goal for today is to use the fact that the logarithm of an exponential function brings the exponent down. We want to use that to solve exponential equations. And for simple exponential equations, this is pretty straightforward. I mean, say you have something like three to the X equals seven. You could take you could take the logarithm of both sides any logarithm, but I'm just going to use the common logarithm for everything from now on. This x goes down in front of the logarithm. And now we don't want to be intimidated or to think this is more complicated than it actually is. The log of three is just a number. The log of seven is also just a number. So X times a number equals another number. And if we divide both sides of this equality by the logarithm of three. We've solved our equation. X is the log of seven over the log of three. We can go to our count later log seven over log three if we want a decimal approximation 1.7712 um all exponential equations are going to be solved basically like this. For more complicated examples, I, I'd like to make the note or the observation that, um, want, that we want to take the log only of the exponential. So what does this mean, if anything? Well, maybe for example, we have two plus three to the X equals nine as something that we want to solve. And we say, oh, we have an exponential function. I just learned, we just learned how to deal with this. So let's quick take the logarithm of both sides. Now, it's not that what we have written here is formally incorrect, but there's no way to proceed 
copied from here. This rule that we're using tells us what to do if we have the logarithm of a power. It does not tell us what to do if we have a logarithm of a power and then some other stuff. So that who is a frog? We need it not to be there. And I mean, getting rid of the two isn't difficult, or at least it's hopefully not difficult if we have addition that we don't want, we can get rid of it by your subtraction. And now that we have the exponent by itself, this is the appropriate time to take a logarithm. The logarithm of three to the X equals the logarithm of seven. Taking the logarithm causes the X to come down in front. And then we have, is this actually the, but this is exactly the same problem at this point. We divide both sides by the logarithm of three and we get 1.7712. So basically any time you're messing around with exponentials, um, if you're trying to solve an equation at least, you're going to be using a logarithm but you need to get the exponential by itself. So any addition or subtraction, division, multiplication, you want that gone before you start thinking about logarithms. Something like this. Um, same thing. I mean, it's a slightly more intricate problem, but you see this exponential and you say, okay, to, to solve for X, we need to take a logarithm but we don't want to take a logarithm until the exponential is by itself. By which I mean, we don't want that four and we don't want that two. So we have to sort of hit this with some algebra, maybe pre-algebra, I should say. We need to get rid of the two. And I mean, to undo addition, we need subtraction. And then we need to get rid of the four and to undo multiplication. You need division. Then we can hit this with the logarithm. And I mean, if you have a little background in this, or you might be thinking natural log, natural log, that will get rid of the E. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. So I'm just using the common logarithm 
for everything. We're going to get a decimal at the end anyway. So if we now take the logarithm of both sides, again, the key point here is that I waited until I had an exponential and nothing else before I took a logarithm. The X comes down in front of the log and X then again, don't, don't get uh, thrown or intimidated. Logarithms of numbers are just numbers. X times a number equals another number. So we just need a bit of division to get X by itself. And I mean, an answer like that, of course, completely worthless in practice. You can't tell policy makers, you know, here's what the population will be in the log of 10 fourths over the log of e years. I'm a big proponent of getting easy to understand decimal solutions. So that's the log of 10 fourths over the log of, and now it's hiding E by itself is sitting this little blue thing above the division symbol. So we press the second button and then that, and we've solved for X, 0.916, Two nine one. And really, I mean, at this point, we're just sort of looking at the variations. Um, we can do maybe one more example. What if, what if instead of X? We have something more complicated in this component. Like I've said that we can have, if we have continuous growth, we might expect to see exponential functions that look like this. So what if we want to solve something like that? Well, going back to what I was just talking about, we've got an exponential. We're going to have to take a logarithm, but we don't want to take a logarithm until that exponential is by itself. So that two is unwanted. And we can do a bit of division to get rid of it. Then once we have gotten the exponential by itself, let me give myself a little room there. Once we have the exponential by itself, we can take the logarithm. Again, this would, in one sense, work out nicer if I used the natural logarithm but I'm just using the common log for everything. Try to keep things simple. Now this power 
comes down, and we get point zero one two x times the log of e equals the log of seven halves. And what happens next? I mean, it ultimately doesn't matter because we're just going to end up with the same decimal. But exactly what you do next probably depends on how comfortable you are with sort of 101, 102, free algebra. One way to think of this is that 0 0.012 is a number. The log of E is a number. So 0 0.012 times the log of E is a number. And we'll just do a single division step. Not every student seems super comfortable doing stuff like that. Another way to think about this is that we have two multiplications. We've got multiplication by 0 0.012, and we've got multiplication by the log of E, and we need to get rid of both those products. Well, to get rid of the 0 0.012, you would divide both sides by point zero twelve. Then to get rid of the logarithm of E, you would divide both sides. by the logarithm of E. The downside is that obviously that's super ugly looking. It's never really great to have a fraction of fractions. But assuming we're going to get the decimal anyway, the question of whether the fraction is nice looking or not is really academic. I mean, once we plug this into our calculator, so we've got the log of, seven halves over 0 0.012. All divided by the log of, and again, E is hiding here above the division symbol. 104.396914. Any, I mean, I know I've sort of been going a little fast. Does anybody have any questions about any of the ex? Examples we have done thus so far. Then this is what I want you to do in the in class work. There is at some point this semester, probably next week, we'll probably do a compound interest. But 
Um, but we haven't done it yet. We'll do like applications of the exponential function and we'll look at compound interest and some other stuff. For now, number 10 is a compound interest problem. So just skip it because we haven't talked about that material yet. 